What's going on guys? Sticks here with the Token Minorities bringing you week one of the JAL, which is just another league. And uh, before I get into anything, just want to let you guys know that the JAL is an off-season league that I am in where we are uh, really just playing against a bunch of busted mons, like a bunch of mons were allowed, like Genesect, uh, Megalodios, to a lesser extent. I don't think it's as busted as others can be, but like Bo uh, Deoxys Defense and Speed, not Attack though, thank the Lord, but basically it's just a bunch of busted mons and I had the last pick, I mean luckily I had the wheel pick, but I still had the last pick so I wasn't touching any of those busted mons, so unfortunately I didn't get any of them, but I still got what I think is a very, very good team and there are some other really solid battlers in this league, so I mean again, it's not the most serious league like CPC, but I mean it's going to be fun anyway and I'm excited to use this team, so I figured, you know what? I might as well upload a little rundown of my team. I have Mew and Tapu Koko, a very, very, very strong core, a Superior Heatran, Halucha, Alolan Muck, which honestly stops a lot of those busted psychic types in their tracks, so I'm really excited for, to have that thing. Seismitoad, Scolipede, Mega Aerodactyl, and Volibee, and Mega Aerodactyl, oh, not Mega Aerodactyl, wow. I was going to say, uh, Scolipede and Tapu Koko are my two Z users. Uh, luckily, the points added up such that I was able to have both Tapu Koko and Scolipede, two very strong Z-mons, be both of my potential Z users. So I have a very, very strong team uh, for this league, and I'm very excited to use it and see how it does. Now, my opponent this week is uh, DGR with Landorus Incarnate, Zapdos, Mega Scizor, Clefable, Volcarona, Milotic, Chesnot, Como O, Skuntank, and Krikatoon with Como O and Volcarona as the Z users, and honestly, his team is terrifying. Like, Landorus I, Zapdos, Mega Scizor, Volcarona, Como, like, those things are, like, just scary. Plain, plain and simple, those things are scary. Clefable, you guys have seen Jolt use it. That thing in the right hands and with the right set can just demolish teams. And the fact that he also has Sticky Web on top of that in Krikatoon just makes me be like, ah, crap. Okay, so uh, one thing that I am noticing that I might be able to exploit is the fact that he does not have a Mon above 101 base speed. So considering that I have speed tiers... I have a very, very fast team. Like, let's just be real. I mean, Tapu Koko, Superior, Halucha, Scolipede, Mega Aerodactyl. I have a very fast team. And so this battle, I'm going to try to exploit the fact that my team doesn't need to even run speed boosting natures in some cases in order to outspeed him. And that's really going to be my game plan. I have a bunch of potential win cons. Really, this whole <laughs> matchup is just... I have four different win cons, and it's just a matter of what he brings and what I'm able to take out will determine what my win con will be. My first win con is going to be Calm Mind Tapu Koko with Electrium Z, and luckily I am able to run Modest because, again, I have enough speed to outspeed Landorus I. The rest, I mean, I just max out the special attack and throw the rest into HP to, I guess, be able to take hits. Now, I do set up on Zapdos, Clefable, Milotic, Chesnut. I mean, I set up on a number of things, and honestly, once I get to plus one, I pretty much just win. The Clefable, if he brings it, I'm expecting it to be unaware because of all the potential setup I have on my team. So that's why I have Z Thunderbolt. And honestly, Z Thunderbolt into Thunderbolt just mercs Clefable. In fact, unless it runs a decent amount of Spadef, I can just take it out after rocks. Like, it, it might just disappear after rocks to a Z Thunderbolt, depending on the investment. And with the speed, I mean, HP Ice takes care of Landorus Eye. And that's really the only thing that doesn't get hit by my stabs of Thunderbolt and Dazzling Gleam. So Tapu Koko is my first win con, my second win con. I'm going to skip around a little bit just because of the nature of this team is going to be Home Claws Mega Aerodactyl. Because once again, looking at his team, he really does not have a Mega Aerodactyl switch in. Like Milotic is the best he can do. And then if he switches in as I Home Claws, Stone Edge is going to do a ton, potentially even two hit KO. It threw a Scald that he goes for. So Mega Arrow is my second win con with Stone Edge, Fire Fang, and Wing Attack, as well as Home Claws. Now, once again, I'm exploiting the fact that he does not have a whole lot of speed, so I am able to not even run any investment on Mega Aerodactyl at all and still be able to outspeed the Landorus and just adamant max attack hit 405. That's insane in conjunction with Tough Claws. And then max HP to make this thing actually really bulky and able to set up on a decent amount. Then just throw four in defense because I was like, eh, 
why not throw that in there and maybe take a bullet punch better and fun fact this mega arrow actually does live bullet punch pretty easily like it's it takes i think i think defensive scissor at plus two fails to ko or it was something i i don't necessarily know if it was plus two i mean i'm not overestimating mega aerodactyl that much but there was some calc like oh i think it was like offensive this is what it was Offensive, full investment, adamant, mega scissor fails to Oko with bullet punch from full. Now, I mean, I know that that's not necessarily saying a whole lot, but I mean, the fact that that's a super effective uh, bullet punch coming off of mega scissor, fully invested mega scissor, and I still live and just murk it with fire fang, that's, I mean, that that's amazing. Uh, Stone Edge, obviously, is just great coverage for his entire team. Wing attack is for the Chesnut and Como, -O, and then Fire Fang specifically for the Mega Scissor. Other than that, I'm just clicking Stone Edge. And I'm not clicking Stone Edge as just like my main stab per se, because I do have Home Claw, so that does mitigate the Stone Miss aspect of it a little bit. My third win con is going to be Leaf Storm Superior. Now, this Superior, I want to run two Hidden Powers. I want to run HP Rock and HP Fire. Unfortunately, I had to decide between the two, and I figured that Volcarona is a much scarier win con for him against me than his Mega Scizor because I do have Mew and Heatran to be able to check the Mega Scizor. So I'm really not as worried about Mega Scizor as I am Volcarona, so I decided to go with HP Rock. Leaf Storm is just a very spammable move against him, and with enough boosts, I can just run through his team with this Superior. Unfortunately, Superior, I do have to run timid in order to be able to outspeed the landerus but i'm still able to throw a decent amount into hp while still having a full special attack investment and finally my last win con is going to be zazu the halucha with the electric seed acrobatics fire punch swords dance and stone edge acrobatics is just a great neutral move for his whole team Fire Punch specifically for the Mega Scizor, and then Stone Edge for the Zapdos, and, well, not really the Volcarona, but apart from Zapdos and Mega Scizor, well, actually, even, even Mega Scizor gets hit neutrally by Acrobatics, but Acrobatics just destroys his team. And again, Halucha is another one of those mons that I can't afford to run Adamant because of the uh, because of the relatively slow nature of his team. Now, this Halucha, I did decide to just naturally make faster than Landorus I, even though it will come in and get the Electric Seed, because one possible way he can beat me is if he sets up with Landorus I or Volcarona, and then is able to sweep me. By making Halucha faster than Landorus naturally, if it happens to get a Rock Polish up against something, Halucha will still be able to outspeed it once my electric seed pops and I am able to use my unburden. So that's what the speed investment is for. Max out attack to hit as hard as possible. And then 16 defense just threw that in there because uh, priority would be his way of trying to revenge kill me once I get out there. And Scizor's bullet punch is the main example of that that I'm thinking of. Now, I have four win cons. You might be thinking, okay, you have four win cons. How the heck are you going to be able to manage that? Well, I'm going to try it with this Mew. Now, this Mew initially was a uh, Calm Mind Pass, but I realized, okay, Mew, I don't really need it to be a win con on its own. I mean, Mew definitely can be. Like, Mew's insanely... Like, Mew's insane. Mew is just a great, insanely versatile Mon that can do pretty much anything. And I was like, okay, well, I can Calm Mind Pass, but you know what? I have four win cons. I'm going to be sub pass, so one... Baton Pass uh, gets through Pursuit, which, I mean, Skuntank might try to use, or Mega Scissor might try to use to get me. But by sub-passing, I give my win cons potentially a free turn to set up, and that can win me the game. So that's decided, ultimately what I decided to go to, uh, I decided to go for with Mew. The speed is to outspeed uh, Mod or Timid Como, that's what it is. The speed is to outspeed Como. -O. And then maxed out HP so that my subs are 101, the bulkiest subs possible, so that they can hopefully live on the switch when I switch into an attack, hopefully a resisted attack by my opponent, and then the rest into special attack just to be able to do some pretty solid damage. But Psychic Flamethrower really does a good number on his team. And then ultimately, like I said, this Mew is just designed to baton pass into one of my win cons and give them a free turn to set up. And finally, I am running Shukaberry. Uh, Heatran because I'm thinking okay I have plenty of checks to like Landorus and I have plenty of checks to Landorus. Volcarona is the scariest thing for me to deal with and that's where Heatran just kind of comes in to play in order to not get swept by it. Just kind of have a contingency 
outside of Mega Aerodactyl and uh, Halucha in order to be able to revenge kill it or just keep it from setting up altogether. Now it really doesn't set up on a whole lot of my team unless he uh, like catches me on a double or something like that. But still, my, my goal is just not let him set up because I do think my offensive pressure can simply overwhelm him as long as I don't let his threats sweep me. And that's what this heat train is designed to do. The speed, now initially I outsped Adamant Scizor, but then I realized, okay, he has Krikatoon, he might bring it, and then Krikatoon, Jolly Max Speed Krikatoon hits 251. It was only like a little bit extra speed that I threw into Heatran in order to be able to counter that, especially with Taunt. So I was like, you know what, I'll just go ahead and do that. Four Attack and Lonely Nature is to be able to uh, Oko Volcarona guaranteed with Rock Slide. I decided to go with Rock Slide over Stone Edge because I'm a wuss. Like, plain and simple, I'm, I'm a wuss. I don't I don't want to risk Stone Edge missing, even though I do have a uh, I do have a answer in the background in the form of Halucha and Mega Aerodactyl. I'm again, I'm still just kind of a wuss, and yeah, that's what it ultimately boils down to. So I mean, I could just be running a calm with Stone Edge, and that would do more than enough. But Rock Slide, Rock Slide with Lonely, I decided was the lesser of two evils. Stealth Rock because that does a number on his team, particularly Zapdos and Volcarona. Lava Plume for the Scizor. I'm not thinking he'll bring Jolly, because I mean, Adamant Scizor, you would need it to be able to revenge kill things like Tapu Koko, Aerodactyl, and Halucha. Like that's, I I, I don't see him bringing Jolly just because you want that damage output on the priority. So Lava Plume is there to Oko Scizor, and then Taunt is to prevent Krikatoon from being able to set up. And yeah, that's pretty much the team. Just four win cons, sub Baton Pass Mew, and then don't get swept Heatran. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's just go ahead and jump right on to the battle. Alrighty, so here we are in the battle, and it's pretty much what I expected. He did not bring Landorus Eye, surprisingly, although, I mean, then again, I do have a whole lot of threats that could... I don't know, potentially make Lander aside less comfortable than it would want to be, but I still thought it was a good enough bring that he would still want to bring it at the very least. But otherwise, we do see the Volcarona, Clefable. We do see the Krikatoon, which, I mean, I'm glad I decided to speed creep with Titar. I mean, really, his team is about what I expected, except with Krikatoon over Landorus. But I mean, then again, I still did plan for Krikatoon anyway. So, uh,. Yeah, I mean, because I see the Krikatoon, I'm assuming that it is going to be Focus Sash lead just to try to get up the Sticky Web. And I mean, even if he does get up the Sticky Web, I still have my Contrary Superior as well as two Flying types in Aerodactyl and Halucha. But either way, I am going to lead with my Heatran as he does lead with his Scizor. And I'm thinking, okay, I can go ahead and immediately just get a ton of damage. I can probably knock this Scizor out or at least get a Lava Plume off on something to free up Halucha or Aerodactyl for later. So I am just going to go for the Lava Plume because, like I said, I do outspeed Adamant, but he does end up being Jolly Mega Scizor as he is able to get a superpower off on me. I mean, I knew it wouldn't KO because he is... I mean, again, he's Jolly Scizor. It would not KO with superpower, but he does get a ton of damage off, and he is going to go into Krikatoon right now. So this is making me very, very, very happy that I decided to speed creep just a little bit more uh, than I had initially planned. So I am going to go for the taunt right there as he is trying to get up his sticky web. And I'm just going to take this opportunity to get up my rocks because he does have Volcarona and Zapdos. And I figure, okay, maybe he'll try to get greedy, go for a quiver dance right here. So I'm going for my rock slide. He just knocks me out with uh, with the HP ground, which, I mean, of course he would bring with Volcarona. I mean, he's against a Heatran. Of course, he's going to bring HP Ground on Volcarona. So now, I'm going to go into my Aerodactyl. I know that there is absolutely no way Volcarona, even at plus one, can knock me out with anything. I mean, even a Z plus one will not knock me out. So I am assuming that maybe he's going to try to go into, like, Clefable or something right here. Just try to take the Wing Attack. Because Wing Attack does guarantee knockout zero bulk Volcarona from full. So, I mean, I could just easily go for that. I could go for Stone Edge. So, I am going to get a little bit greedy and go for the Hone Claws right there as he does end up calling that and stays in and goes for Quiver Dance as I do get my Hone Claws up. Now, like I said, Aerodactyl 100% lives everything. Like, even Modest, like, even Modest Bloom Doom, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Modest Bloom Doom. 
uh, does not knock me out. And I mean, unfortunately, because my heat train does go down, I mean, again, in the background, I have Halucha as a contingency, but I'm pretty sure Aerodactyl pretty much just lives pretty much lives everything so i am just going to stay in right here go for my stone edge to knock out the volcarona now it is worth noting okay so first of all he does go for the z inferno overdrive and i do live that and as you can see that is timid damage not modest and aerodactyl just choose like i mean choose like nobody's business now in the first uh game in the first time we played this he crit me right there now overall i think i don't think that that mattered too much because I mean, he did knock me out. I went into Tapu Koko, and I think once Halucha came in and revenge killed the Volcarona, I would have gone Tapu Koko, set up the electric terrain, sacked my superior, and then gone Halucha to revenge kill. And even if he switched out into Zapdos on my Halucha, it really wouldn't have mattered because at this range, Tapu Koko pretty much just wins the game. I mean, I Dazzling Gleam, Thunderbolt, Z, Thunderbolt, 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 and I just win. So as long as I can get this Volcarona out of the way, Tapu Koko just wins, or heck, even just get the Volcarona not at plus one speed anymore. But luckily, I do live and I do uh, knock him out with Stone Edge. I was guaranteed to hit that Stone Edge because of Home Claws, and honestly, Aerodactyl is going to put in a ton of work right here. Ghost Clefable, obviously unaware as, I mean, you can gauge by that damage. That does nothing, and I'm adamant Mega Aerodactyl. Moonblast, because of my bulk, I am able to live, so I will get another KO with Stone Edge knocking out that Clefable and I mean pretty much at this point it's GG because I mean Tapu Koko just straight up wins he goes into Coma O oddly enough and I am able to one shot that thing with wing attack I guess maybe he was trying to go off the fact that I might not have wing attack and Coma O could live and Dragon Dance and potentially bring it back but he does get knocked out goes Zapdos reveals to be Charty I mean of course he was Charty that was his answer to Mega Arrow well quote unquote answer to Mega Arrow, mostly Halucha, but uh, somewhat Mega Arrow as well as he does chew that plus one Stone Edge and knocks me out with Discharge, but at this point Tapu Koko will just clean up the game uh, with, I mean, T-Bolt, the Zapdos, and I am going to be able to Z Thunderbolt the Krikatoon to knock that out. So, I mean, again, if we had played it out the first time, I mean, he, okay, I will say he did offer the restart and that was insanely classy. Like, that was one of the classiest things I've seen somebody do. Like, that was... I mean, I, I can't just say enough about that. What that says about his character and who he is as a person. He was able to replay... That he was re able to restart after that. So, DGR, you're you're an awesome dude. You really are. Uh, but we are able to come out with the victory. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't get to reveal my... I didn't really didn't get to use my Mew or Superior sets, which I was kind of looking forward to. But, again... I mean, Mega Arrow put the team on his back and was able to take that victory. So, yeah, pretty solid and dominant performance in week one. Uh, looking forward to see what the rest of this league, or really looking forward to see how the rest of this league goes. And I'm excited to use this team and all the different Mew sets you can possibly bring. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.